The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Who New Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. So, um, 80s rule, man. 80s do rule. So you can always pop on to Armed Radio uh, and stream it. And there's, like I said, there's a lot of different shows, something for everybody. And we are on from 9 to 10 on Tuesday nights. Okay, so that's going on. I So I want to thank Jim. I also want to thank my accidental stage manager. He started off as an accidental intern. Then he graduated to accidental assistant. Now he is just, I can't live without him. The accidental stage okay. manager runs the show from Idlewild, California. Put your hands together for Leo Ritter. You better roll your arts. Leo, I love your shirt. It's adorable. Thank you. It's adorable. Oh my God, that is such Me a killer guys, song. It's all about love. So. It is, well, you do have a song. You wrote a musical called Broken Moments, and All About Love is one of the big songs, kind of the 1030 number. I also noticed that last week when you made our promo, that was your song as well. Yeah. Ronnie, that was really good. Oh my God, Jeffrey Campbell has joined us. He says, hey, Leo, beautiful. So we have some of our regulars has joined us, and you know how they are. They will all be <laughs> popping on. So I'm going, I grew an accidental let me lower this. Okay, so I also like to use my phone so I'm watching. You can watch us on the What's the Story with Maria page. You could also watch us on my personal page. And you are welcome to share the show to your page or any other page if you like. Hi, Jeffrey Campbell. Jeffrey Campbell made a beautiful video this week. Actually, I have to go and watch it. I haven't even had a chance to listen to it. Jeffrey, this week has been insane. And I'll tell you, it's good. Well, it's all good. It's good and challenging. I won't say it's good and bad. The the bad news were, was that um, a lot of us were out of work. The great news is we're back at work. And that is fantastic. Leo, you are back at work. You are teaching camp in Idlewild. Leo showed me a promo he made for the school, for the camp. It's amazing with the I've kids. I've got some wonderful, you know, I like to play with kids. It's so much fun, and we yeah. video and stuff. They have imaginations and big old brains in there, which is yeah, it's just endless. It's endless. Yeah. Kids are great, and you can see the joy in their eyes and their faces. So that video was amazing that you made, and I'm so happy that you're going to be teaching summer camp. Which brings me to my next point. But Jeffrey, I am going to listen to that, and you know I love to post Jeffrey's videos to my wall. So what I wanted to talk about was tonight is June 22nd. It is, of course, the first official day of summer. So I, you know, I love some, I love all the seasons. I love the seasons So and the change and all that. So um, tonight we're really going with a summer theme. And um, I have my John Coltrane shirt on tonight. Oh, nice. Yes. I, um, you know, it's funny. For some reason, summer and jazz for me go together. When I was a kid, my dad always, he loved jazz. He was a huge jazz buff. And he used to blare it, and we'd open our windows. And so to me, like, when I would hear jazz, it's like very summer, you know, and those uh, 
especially horns and stuff like that. You know, I taught camp up north before I, you know, before New York, we were, I was up north. And in those woods where we had our camps, uh, there was a jazz camp uh, that they had there. And people would go off into the woods and just practice. I mean, you would hear everything. You would hear oh. horns, you would hear strings, you would There's hear... There's nothing that you know, makes me happier than just hearing music like that, especially jazz. There's something about it that just, it shifts ev all my feelings around. You know, uh, Chauncey Dandridge. Range. What kind of jazz is your favorite, Fran? You know, I won't say that I'm like, um, I don't know. You know, it has to be based in something. Like, I, I like big band a lot. Mm -hmm. I tend to, to like big band. But I love John Coltrane very much. He's probably my favorite. Of course, I do love Miles Davis as well. You can't not, you can't love jazz and not. But I also like traditional more traditional like Ella Fitzgerald I was talking to a I know I know uh, I was talking to a, a, the, the a manager at um, Stonewall and speaking of Stonewall Chauncey Dandridge our licensed sound guy and wonderful uh, my new friend I love him we work together on Monday nights um, the, the manager there his name is Dave and he's a huge jazz buff as well we were talking jazz last week and I said the one voice that every single time I hear it, I stop and I say, who is that? Who is that? That voice is amazing. Every single time it's Ella Fitzgerald. Like it's old, yeah. right? Wonderful, smart. Oh, oh just, so, just so smooth and beautiful. It's so beautiful. But then there's also jazz like the Holly Cole Trio from Canada that mm -hmm. I love. You know, like there's newer, uh, more, you know, there's newer amazing people. So to me, like, uh, and also, did you see the movie Soul? Uh, I have not yet. Well, I get your box that of I am going to need four boxes of tissues, and I'm not ready for an emotional movement like that yet. Yes, and I got to tell you, I am. I was blown away by how advanced it was spiritually. That's what I was told. Yeah, I mean, I just think that I won't say they took a risk because I think that's never a risk to do something like that. It's always such a great thing but you talk about thinking outside the box and writing outside the box but as a musician or as a performer you see that movie and you are moved to tears because you identify with wanting to perform so badly uh, you, you know, know Jamie Foxx's voice I heard that was Jamie Foxx doing that character's voice really yeah wow it was just incredible it was just incredible I can't say enough about it I'm actually gonna watch it again so um, you know, it's a good you, idea. I need to watch it, and I'll, I'll... oh, you're gonna love it. But there's so many things I need to watch. Like in the Heights is out now. I can't wait. You know, they filmed it right in my neighborhood. I yeah. live right next to the bridge. I think we have a couple of friends in it. I I believe we do have a couple of friends in it. So also we have a couple of friends in West Side Story as they were filming it. They filmed that in my neighborhood too. So I'm really excited. To me, this is the summer of love and the summer of music. It's going to be a great summer. I can feel it's a it. Regeneration. Uh, it's a renaissance, and we're we're coming out. Well, I think we're out of the dark. I, I mean, I yeah. feel in the Northeast we are. And I love raisin sauce. What? Raisin sauce. Oh, renaissance. Sorry. What? Leo, you know, you're silly. <laughs> you're silly. But um, anyway, so so that's what's going on now. Uh, Tonight, we have two amazing people. I always, you know, I, it's funny, both of these people I've wanted to have on for so long, and uh, we have tried to kind of get it together. There was different reasons why, um, you know, some of our, sometimes their work, oh no, Dominic Ufa says nudes. Dominic, must everything be about nudity? Uh, apparently to him it is. Something happened with him in the mirror today. Apparently, a yeah, a mirror. It was a funny mirror at a fun house or a hotel or something like that. Oh my! Well, we a hotel could be a fun house. I mean, or scare, or it could be a horror, a house of horrors. Okay, so Cindy Craker has joined us. She's watching. John Pandish is watching. Hi, John Pandish. Huh? Of course, Dominic Poopa is watching as well. We have Jeffrey Mandor. So we have a lot of our regulars on. Uh, Mandor okay. asked, "How about Charlie Parker?" Um. Yeah, I you know I guess I'd have to go back and re-listen more. You know, there's a lot of uh, music that I, sometimes I have to go and revisit. Well, without Charlie Parker, we wouldn't have Birdland. You're right. Charlie Parker's Birdland, and I am fortunate to say that All About Love 
we actually performed on the stage uh, for John, Jim Crusoe's uh, party on the stage and just one of the most wonderful blessings that thank God I'm alive in this world to be able to stand on that stage and sing a song that, you know, because Charlie Parker played his horn so well. Wow. You know what? Uh, you just reminded me there's another amazing place that I went to many a couple of years back called the Red Rooster Tavern. It's on, I believe, 129, 126. Right? It's incredible. And downstairs, if you go downstairs, you, I mean, the, the main floor is food. and But if you go downstairs, there's a jazz room. Mind-blowing. And my newest favorite, my new favorite jazz performer is Arturo Oferel. He's a musical director, and he plays piano like nobody's business. So he's my new, I mean, not new, new maybe a few years He's been around forever, but new to me, so, and he's a local guy. Uh, Cuban, also Cuban. So anyway, we can go talk about jazz forever, but we want to bring our guests on. So no, well, they're in the green room. I don't know if they found the champagne yet, but. Oh my uh, God, it's in right. there. So we, we have two guests tonight, and both of them were, were people that I was trying to get on. For years, we've been trying to make this happen, and just schedules didn't work out, but I, they happened to both be free tonight and I'm so happy because it's summer, it's the first day of summer and there's so much joy coming our way. I can feel it. I, I meditated a little bit before the show and I could just feel joy is coming towards us. So it's great. So our first guest is one of my all time favorite singers. I gotta get ready. You, you ready? Yeah, get ready because she's she's a star. Powerhouse. I can Thank you. Powerhouse, but the sweetest kind of powerhouse. You mean so. that LaDonna Burns? Oh, hello! LaDonna Burns? Oh my God. I cannot believe we got LaDonna Burns on the show. How did we do it? Finally, LaDonna, how many years have I been trying to get you on the show? How many years have you been doing the show? Four years. Four years? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you worked for many years. You worked at uh, Brandy's on Tuesdays with well, my Tuesday client. nights. Yeah, uh, Tuesday nights. So we can never really make that happen. And um, and now finally we're doing the streamyard thing, so it's working out. Honey, I'm so happy you're here. Um, okay, so we have so much. Oh, I want to tell everybody, and not to embarrass you, just because people need to know. So there, <laughs> you know, I'm a singer as well, and I love vocals, and I pay a lot of attention to vocals, but. You know, when you work in the business, you hear a lot of music, so you tune out quite a bit. But LaDonna's voice is one of those voices that there is no way on earth I could ever tune out LaDonna's voice. As a matter of fact, when I hear it, no matter what I'm doing, I put it down and I have to listen. I have to turn and actually listen. So I wanted to tell you that, LaDonna, because you are, when your name comes up in any circle, I always have the same feeling like, Wow, like your voice just makes me feel wonderful. Thank you. So I want to tell you that. And you know, I'm you're a diva, so you're in a category with a lot of other great divas that we all know. You know, they're friends of ours. Uh, and, but I gotta tell you, LaDonna, to me, there's something about you that just stands out. So I want to- Oh, Maria. It's the truth, honey. It's the truth. So I'm just thrilled that you're here. Now, I was like, look, you know, because when I have guests, I always like brush off, even though they're my friends. I didn't know that you were born in Indiana. And you're Indianapolis. from Indianapolis. Okay. So is that where you where you got your music start and your love of music? Did it yeah. happen? Okay. Born and raised in Indianapolis. I, uh, well, I went to school in Michigan. I went to Michigan State for college. But then I went back to Indianapolis because I was going to go, to, I was going to med school. The, okay. All right. Here's my next thing. <laughs> so this is, this blow, always blows my mind. And Michael Isaacs brings it to my attention all the time. Yes. You so know, I'm your biggest fan. We'll, Michael Isaacs will fight over who's your biggest fan. But he'll say he is and I'll say I am. But he's the one who told me, he said, you know, that LaDonna is a biologist. She went to school for biology. I have a degree in microbiology. I mean, who the hell knew that? Like, <laughs> I, do it. I, mean, I hope to develop the HPV vaccine on one of my summer internships at Eli Lilly Pharmaceutical the, between my junior and senior year of college. 
Oh yeah, like that's something everybody does. In, in between, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, who doesn't do things like that? LaDonna, that's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> you should be really proud of yourself, honey. Yeah, it's, it's weird. People are always like, what? I, I have like other, I have like at least three other lifetime careers because when I was in Indianapolis, after I decided, I decided to drop medical school because they told me I had to eat, breathe, and sleep medicine. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess that's the way it's designed, right? Yeah, and they're like, I said, I can't sing anymore. Yeah. Okay, so that's my so that's my question. First of all, Mario Davila uh, has popped on. You know how much we love Mario. Yeah. And um, so now I, that's my next question. So which came first, your love of of my biology and science? You know, as a young as a young girl in in Indiana, mm -hmm. which did you have a first love? Were they I always love music. Okay. Always. Um, in fact, when I was home recently, I was going helping my mom clean out the garage. You know, you have all these papers and notebooks from when I was in school. And I was like in like seventh or eighth grade. And our teacher said to us, what job would you do if money was no object, if you could do anything? And I wrote a whole essay about how I wanted to be a singer. Wow. But in the essay, I was about 12, but in the okay. essay I said, but I know it's not practical, so I'm just going to go to medical school instead. Like, that's oh. easy. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now, um, what sign, when was your birthday? Next month, July 27th. I'm a Leo. Oh, of course you are. That makes sure my mother would be Leo. Yeah. Leo. Oh, not that kind of Leo. Oh, Leo, oh. keep the sign Leo. <laughs> very silly tonight he was extra silly tonight uh, you know what that makes total sense leo's it's so funny because my mom i mean she's been gone many years now but she was uh an incredible she designed she uh she made bridal gowns she was an embroiderer and she worked very hard at that but when i asked her um you know like, like i interviewed her at one point in her life mm -hmm. and she said that her secret wish was to be a stage actress i was like <gasps> Really? So you just never know. But Leos are very practical. Yeah. And they're very grounded, but they're powerful. Leos are silently powerful. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what's going on now that you are always singing? I know that you're always performing. Are you also still in the medical world in some way? No. Okay. I totally... Um, when I came out of school, I started medical school and was like... This is not, I was the most miserable I'd ever been in my life. And I'm really a pretty positive, happy person. I know you are. And so I was starting to get snippy with people. And so I went and auditioned for a production of Dream Girls that was happening in Indianapolis. And, and, got it, got right? it. and so I just remember having this, my parents were furious. I can imagine. And my brother, my oldest brother's like, but you don't understand, they thought you were gonna be a doctor. And they wasted money, and I said, "Look, no one wasted money on me because I got a full ride to Michigan State." You did? Yeah, I, I didn't. Did, did, I did, did, did not. So, yeah. Okay, so you you can sing like nobody's business. You went to medical school. You're mm -hmm. sharp as a whip, and you got a, a ride. Full ride. In, oh in fact, at, at one point, they were basically paying me because I became an RA, I was an RA for two years, so I was getting a check from the school because I had everything covered. And so I said, they didn't waste money on me. I mean, I, I paid my way through school just through doing my work like I was supposed to in high school. Yeah, and, and that vaccine alone that you that you helped develop. I mean, come on, how many yeah. people do, how many people have been affected by that? So many. Yeah. And it's so crazy because Michael especially was looking at me when this whole pandemic happened because I know what making a vaccine looks like and Ow. we started that vaccine, that was what, well, I don't want to get my age away, but that was in the 90s. That vaccine didn't come out until 2006. That's what, that, see, they, they can fast track something if they want to. Right. That's an incredible point, LaDonna. So the HP vaccine is mostly designed for women, is that correct? Exactly. And young women, right? Yep. Okay. So this is such, this is a whole other show, but this is so fascinating. So what you just said, they can fast track something if they want to. 
the target if the target audience is someone they want to fix but do you know how they deal with women in medicine oh my god wow this is fascinating yeah this is really amazing Okay, so then we could talk about that forever and we might have to, well, we're gonna have to bring you back on that. Now that we can use StreamYard, it's so great. Okay, so I want to, you worked at Brandy's from, that's how I met you for many, many years. Like about 12 years. 12 years, wow, years. okay, longer yeah. than I thought. And <laughs> I mean, cause I thought it was about maybe, I don't know why, that's a long yeah. time. But like time flies in our business, it just flies. Oh, yeah, and I know the date because I did all shook up with Greg Goodberg and that was the Christmas season of tw 2008. Okay, wow. And when I was there, he's like, oh, you should come to Brandy's. I'm like, okay. I had never heard of it, had never been. And his birthday's in January. So when we got back, I went there for his birthday party and he introduced me to Joe. How great. Um, and Jimmy. And he said, you need to get up there and sing. And then next thing I know, they're like, oh, you want to give him a sub list? And then yeah. I got him there. Yeah, of course. They're not. Listen, they're smart. They knew. Yeah. Now, um, are we getting? Maybe we're getting an echo. I think sometimes we do. But anyway, all right. So the next thing is that you were in Carolina or Change. You were Caroline, mm -hmm. right? Did you do Sophisticated Ladies as well? I have never done that show, but I want. I don't know what I, I do. Have to Follies. do that show. I did Follies. Okay. And won an award for Follies playing Stella Deans, where I had to learn how to tap dance. Really? Yeah, because Stella's big number is a tap number. Um, mirror, mirror, who's that woman? That song is a big. And our friend Terry White did it in what on was Broadway. it Five, on Broadway? That yes. was her role. And we know Terry White is a hooker. She's yes. like a legit tap dancer. And so. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Thank you, Lila. There it is. Wow. When they approached me for it, because I didn't audition, the director was like, hey, what are you doing? Are you are you around? I said, okay. Do you want to do Follies? Okay. And I really looked real quick about what Follies really was, because even though I do musical theater, I'm not a traditional musical theater girl. Right, so, right, right. I, I like, understand. Sondheim, I, okay. Yeah. And so I said, yes. And then she said, by the way, can you tap dance? <laughs> and I went, oh, sure. I've yeah. tapped in two shows where they taught me to tap. So I can. And she goes, okay. And the choreographer was amazing, Sarah Bryans and Gabby, her assistant. And they had me looking like I tapped my whole life and I won an award for it. Like Unbelievable. But listen, yeah. why would that surprise anybody? You were in medical school. You were an amazing singer. You helped develop a vaccine. You got a free, why would tap, learning a tap number be, like of course you learned to do it, of course you won an award. But you know what I love about you, LaDonna? You don't toot your own horn. Because I've never heard these stories before. I'm hearing them now and I've known you for years. And I've also worked in politics. <laughs> Ding it, all, 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 my, all my bells are going off. You gotta tell us about that. The job I had for four years, right before I decided to move to New York, I, this Memorial Day weekend was my 20th year anniversary of moving to New York. Well, so well, I moved well, Memorial well, Day weekend, 2001. And for four years prior to that, I worked for the Indiana State House of Representatives. I was a legislative assistant for the House Democratic Party. So I had like four <coughs> weeks that I um, basically wrote speeches for, communicated with their constituents, dealt with the lobbyists, all that stuff. So I did that for four years while doing community theater, some professional theater in Indianapolis at night. So I worked there by day and then did theater at night. That's incredible. Do you ever, do you ever miss that? No. No. Okay. What's the best part of politics and what's the worst part of politics for, for you? I met a lot of great people that really want to try and change things, but now mm -hmm. I know the gritty ins and outs and how lobbyists pretty much run everything, no matter what people say they'll do is who's in their pocket. Right. Even the good people lobbyists, lobbyists are who really run it. Yeah, that's what I've heard. And it's just, I, you know, I want to not believe that, but it's hard, it's hard. It is, it is what happens though. And it, like, I've seen too many good people 
try and get things done and then they don't get it. And you know, when I was working there, that was right around the time of Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> wow, that's a that's a while ago. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because mm-hmm. remember, I was I moved here to 20 years ago. So that's um, great. this is wow. the late 90s, and I used to tell our interns all the time, like, look, don't let these politicians talk to you any kind of way. And we had a scandal in our own place because there was this one guy who really liked girls and was caught in a compromising position with one of our aides. He was Republican and they didn't turn him in. And he used to try to come for me all the time. Like he would see me, I would be in the back of the house. He would see me in the front and make a beeline and say stuff like, "Mm, hey, how you doing today? And I was like, if you don't get away from me. Wow. And he was this big, super conservative Christian family values Republican, the biggest hypocrite of them all. Oh yeah. Um, Oh, there's so much stuff. If we please, there's so much stuff. Who would have that kind of time to to look into it? But they all listen. I always feel like it's the guy or girl that makes the most noise about something that has the most to hide. Yes, always. Yes. I mean, you, you and I could. I mean, we could keep going. And this is. I'm fascinated by this conversation because I have so much to say, but I know that I'll I'll just like keep going with it. But uh, even so, some of the stuff that's happening, whatever. We'll talk some other time about it because I just am. It makes me crazy, but okay. So you are kind of a jack of all trades, definitely, right? And um, and you're creative in many, many, many different ways. So, so also now another thing that I found out about you is that you are pop rock instructor at New York Film Academy. Yes. So I also teach. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, Manhattan School of Music. I taught pop rock there, and they just asked me back to teach acting the songs of the sophomores. This fall so I'm finally branching out of being just the pop rock girl and I'm wow all traditional musical theater too so I was like surprised I'm like oh my god I'm coming back and it's not just pop rock and so they trust me with those kids that's incredible so these are sophomores they go oh my god it's so lucky to have you yeah but when I taught pop rock for them the first time it was seniors but now I get them earlier but that's great that's really yeah. great. Yeah, no, I think it's wonderful. They're gonna love you. They're gonna yeah. love you. I'm lucky to have you. And you know, you know there's well, so I many... had a teacher that always want my counselors always wanted me to be a teacher. Well, I'm sure you're an incredible. How can you not be a good teacher if you love you love you, you have such a love of knowledge and taking it in? And also, you're not just someone that learns. You're someone that does amazing things with what you learn. It's one thing to memorize something. It's one thing to get through classes. It's even another it, one thing to like get all A's and B's or whatever. But to actually internalize what you've learned now and put it back out there into the world and do good with it, that's a whole other level, whole other level. And that's the kind of person that you are. So, you know, now these kids get you as a teacher and they get to be inspired by that. Not just someone that is talking the talk, but you're living it. You're living that. They get to see me work. Yeah. Like, I had a, a group come and see me. Yep. <laughs> is that it? What is that? Oh my God, that was at 54 below? Yeah, I had a good string of concerts there. Um, Robert Schneider, who also works with me at New York Film Academy, does uh, produces a lot of shows there, and he would just ask me all the time, but that one came because people saw me there. That was a tribute to Rusty. Wow. Um, and so I learned that song. The guy playing the piano is Danny Lincoln, who is my accompanist at New York Film Academy from a pop rock class. Oh, great. Wow. Yeah. So, so, yeah. I know that room's coming back really soon. A lot of the rooms are coming back soon. Let me just check to see what people are saying. So, Hector Garcia is watching. Greg Conrad is watching. Um, I just want to make sure I'm in. Cheryl Giuliani Rubenstein is watching. She's in LA. So, uh, this is awesome. Found one of her before. Okay. So, Mandar, one of our great friends and our regulars. Um, this is awesome. He said we found one of the performance videos. Yeah, you can. I, 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 you want to look up Ladonna? Ladonna, do you have a website or? I, 
that's something I'm working on. I gotta okay. put it all together. I have all these videos to copy together because yeah. yeah. And yeah, also you can find me there though. Facebook and YouTube. Instagram. Instagram. Oh, yep, there it is. Leo's got it. He is on it. Oh my god. Okay, so and just recently you did something in the city live. I just did two performance two live projects. Um I was doing the Blues Brothers out in the radio park, which was a cinemersive <coughs> um, project where they would show the movie and then they would cut away from the movie and we'd do the, sh the big numbers in person with wow. a cast of Broadway greats. Amazing. And I just finished Broadway Inspirational Voices. We had our first in-person concert. And um, I, yeah, I, I saw that because, you know, of course, I follow like all my friends and what they're doing and you're one of those people that i always what is it leo i, yes. I have a question you said blues brothers was that so you did think aretha franklin's thing i was one of the blues sisters so i sang back up my good friend charity dawson did think but i have some think before at 54 below for the aretha tribute um <laughs> oh, i was brought in to be the shaka khan feature during old landmark at the beginning when they're at the church with james brown Oh, <laughs> yeah, people have no idea, LaDonna, La what LaDonna does. It's just, I mean, people do. But I'm saying a lot of our radio listeners, please do yourself a favor and look up LaDonna Burns. So that's L-A-D-O-N-N-A -N -N -A Burns, B-U-R-N-S. Um, so look LaDonna up. There's so much that she's doing and so much that she will continue to do. So here's what we're going to do, LaDonna. We're going to bring on Ike. We're gonna put you back in the green room, bring on Ike, and then we're gonna bring you back on in like 15 minutes. And all then right. we'll all talk about performing live because Ike is getting back there and he's a comedian. And so it's like a whole other world, but it's also live performance. Yeah. So, and that is coming back, it's roaring back. So LaDonna, now you have opened up a whole can of worms here that I cannot put a lid back on it. <laughs> yeah, now you, I could talk to you for days on end. So you're going to have to come back at some other point again, make another yes, trip. But, definitely. But today, don't go far. I won't. I'll okay. Be All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for my friend, an amazing multitasker, master of many things, LaDonna Burns. She's going to come right back. Woohoo! Wow. 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 That's what I'm talking about. When I grow up, I want to be with Donna Burns. Right. So you see this? You see that what you're feeling right now? You see how your hair is standing on it? Oh. That's what I feel every time LaDonna sees. I, would, I, can't I don't care that. what the hell I'm doing. I don't care where I am. If LaDonna starts singing, I literally, my body knows better than to do anything else. I can't believe I missed her and Carolyn her change or I wasn't able to see it because I bet that is just the fiercest thing to see. Yeah, and there's a million other things she's done, just like a million other things. BJ and Smokey Joe's. I mean, you know, uh, just like a million things. Anyway, she's, I just, and I love her. She's just a beautiful person. Yeah. I, when I can a lot of there are a lot of divas in this town. A lot. And they're all talented. But... Everybody has something different, and LaDonna is, some, LaDonna is just like something different going on there. Are there any funny divas out there? Oh, well, there's always there's always room for funny divas <laughs> and, and cute boys. So oh, we oh. need to bring in our friend, Ike of Oh, my God! <laughs> Look at you, Ray of Sunshine. Happy of, Pride. Happy, happy Pride. 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 Ike, this outfit is outstanding. My niece actually made it when she was 15 years old. No. Yeah. Nieces rainbows, are amazing. Rainbows, rainbows. I have two nieces. Ike, you're gonna love this story. I'm gonna tell you Jeez. quickly, Jeez. and you'll appreciate it as a comedian. My nieces are in their 20s now, but when they were in high school, they said, "Zia, we just want to let you know that we're in the Spectrum Club." And I was like, "Oh, the Spectrum? What's that, honey? The Spectrum Club?" They said, "It's for gay people and friends of gay people." And I thought when I was a kid, that was like the drama department. But <laughs> now, right? Right. I mean, how different, right? So different. Uh, and now look at your nieces are making you rainbow outfits. Well, that's the funny thing you should say that because when I was growing up, you couldn't say the word gay. 
Mm -hmm. And God forbid you say Don the Gay Apparel in a Christmas song on stage and everybody's like whimpering and laughing in the background. Right. And my niece, here she is, I'm telling her I'm gay. And she goes, you know, I had a feeling when you were picking out mommy's panties at Victoria's Secrets. <laughs> no. No. And no problem. It's amazing to me. Isn't it incredible? Like this new generation, they're so, yeah. um, they're, they're just so open to everything. And they're not, they're not judgy at all. No, no. I mean, you're still going to get a couple. Really. Well, yeah, but those are just, you know, I mean, yeah. that's always going to happen. Yeah. So, Ike, you're, you're doing a million trillion things now. Thank God. What the you hell always, here? you always were, you had like lots of things going on. And then, of course, we all know COVID happened and everything yeah. shut down. Mm -hmm. um, but you have also, always had a lot going on. So tell us, you want to start with what you're doing now? Sure, yeah. Um, last year, again, as you said, everything shut down. We had a big tour going on with my show, Fifty Shades of Gay. And thank God, back again. And we are traveling not as much as we were last year because everything just started opening back in April. Right, right. So uh, we're doing the Triad Theater here in New York City. August Which I love. I love that theater. Oh, God, amazing. It's a great space. Amazing. So it is. It's wonderful. I got Tim Moss, who you know. I'm, I'm I love Tim. Tim lives, he lives like seven blocks from me. Yes. Yes. We meet in the park sometimes. He's yes. so cute. Okay, so this is, um, so is this what you're doing yes, here? Yes, 50 Shades of Gay at the Triad, yep. Okay, when when is that happening? This one's Saturday, August 7th. You can get your tickets at triadnyc.com. It's an adult variety show. Come out. Maria, you have to go. What? I have to go. I'm going to go. Okay, so it's an, tell us, what does that mean, an adult variety show? What does that mean to the listener? I think Carol Burnett, but a little bit more... I love it. Yeah, a little bit more. So we have we have everything. We have uh, comedy, music, drag, sketches. We have audience participation, giveaways from. Spotify. Oh my God! This sounds amazing. You have to do me a favor. When this, right before, um, maybe like two weeks before this actually happens, will you post it on my Facebook wall? Sure. Like just post it on, and then I will share it to my show wall. So that we can remind people about it, because yes. I find sometimes that uh, you know it's always good to remind people just before. Yes. Again, even though they know about it now, but oh my God, we got to get out there. That's it's fantastic. Not, and that's the thing, Ray. It's mindless fun. I think we all need that right now. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. So now, tell me about how comedy. Like, were you always a funny kid, or were you a shy kid? How did comedy come to be your 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 gift? Well, I, I kind of knew in school I was kind of imitating the teachers. The kids were loving it, so I got that energy from them, and it, mm -hmm. it kind of sparked. I really didn't do anything until I was probably 43 when I first hit. And really? Up. Yeah. But I, I watched Joan Rivers. I watched Rodney Dangerfield, Phyllis Diller, the, the greats. The great. You know, Ike, let me interrupt just for a minute. We were just recently talking about Joan Rivers. And I thought to myself, because I actually said this to a young man last week who was so over the top sensitive about something. And I said, listen, honey, you know, he had just come out and he was so extra sensitive about everything. I said, you know what you need to do as a young gay kid? You need to go back and listen to some Joan Rivers. Because you have no idea, like that, she's class, that's comedy. Uh -oh. You're, everybody's gonna be offended. Yeah. Just, but, you know, like, I, I feel like I wish she was around right now. Oh, me too. I, can you imagine? She still would get away with it. Of course, she's the only one that would yeah, get away with yeah. it. But we, I, I really miss the, the things she used to say that so many of us were thinking. Yeah, all, all the time. And you would yeah. be, like, beat red from her saying, you'd be like, oh, my God, I can't believe she said that. Yeah. But you would burst out laughing. Yeah, completely. Yeah. And you know what the thing is? is I think today the, the comedians that are out there, they're not like Joe. Joan was brilliant. Mm -hmm. she, just, she knew how to set a joke up and yeah. she made fun of herself. She made fun of herself first and then Absolutely. opened the gate for everybody else. Absolutely. That's what I kind of do. Too. Yeah, I know. I love it. Now, you did it shows at the Duplex for many, many years. Yes, I started at the Duplex. I did my first open mic. Um, I think it was Michael Brill was hosting. and then it was Who I love. I love yeah, Michael. Yeah, yeah, amazing, right? And then Poppy Kramer. Uh, we love, love Poppy. Ah. Uh, I, I'm still I'm still in denial. Yeah. And I will always be in denial about that. That was a bad year. 
that was a bad year. We lost Robin Camille. We lost Poppy Kramer. There were so many. Yeah. Some years are like that. It's like it just sweeps through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We could, we, I was just talking to my friend Susie about this, how it's just some years are like that. And there's nothing you can do except take it and say, I'm going to live my life and I'm going to live it to the fullest. Exactly. You know? So, but you you have so many shows, honey, always going on. You're always doing something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, right now I have a podcast with Tim Moss called Loose Lips. Yeah. Uh, we do that uh, every two weeks. It's a fabulous time. We, we come on, we talk, we uh, we have a special guest on, and then we have these great segments. Um, one is called, what the hell did I just put in my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, we, I love it. We try different foods from small businesses that, you Oh, know, Cool. During COVID, we sample them online, give them props, and you know, how great! Push them on the show. Yeah, that's wonderful. And why not? And the, the thing about COVID is that's all we were doing was eating. I mean, that's all Maria, we were doing. Maria, I gained so much. I can't even tell you. No, honey, I gained at least twenty-five pounds. At mm -hmm. least. I know. And then you know, then I would lose ten. Then I would go back up. Then I would just give up. Then I would have a crying fit. Then I, and finally, I just bought bigger pants. <laughs> I was just pants. like, stop it. Just buy bigger pants and uh -huh. shut the hell up. Nike is so happy I'm buying. Like, I got sock and Nike right now because I'm all, everything is loose. Sweat yeah, pants, but that's, sweat but pants. listen, I was in Old Navy today and everything has an elastic waist. <laughs> and you know what? They're smart. Yeah. Oh, and They're how? They're smart to do that. Now, what is this new thing you're doing? This, this shut up and drive? Oh, shut up and drive. So uh, Eileen Shapiro, who is an amazing journalist, she writes in, in um, wonderful stories on all the amazing, and I love that you talk about music. Of course. 80s, 80s was my huge thing. Oh, uh, I loved she, it. she knows everybody in celebrity nightlife. She knows Cindy Lauper, Adam Ant, uh, Sandra Bernhard, you name oh, it. really? How cool. She, she interviews them. So I came up with this idea that why don't we drive around New York City, pick up these people on their way to their gig, and do a, a really over the top interview with them. So yeah. We are filming in uh, in the summer. And we're gonna release it out. That's amazing. I can't wait. Yeah. Gonna that's awesome. gonna be so great. And that's another job. thing. Also, post this on my wall right before yes. you launch it. Okay. Yes. We gotta pick you up, Maria. Sure. Oh my God! Anytime, Mike. <laughs> Anytime. And I have five thousand jobs now. I'm like yeah. a, that crazy person. Uh, yeah. I'm Thank working at Stone. Been. Stonewall on Mondays. Mm -hmm. I'm working at the Duplex on Wednesday. I'm working at Brandy's on Fridays, and I pick up a lot of Saturdays. It's crazy. It's like that nutty life that we live. We're back to it. Hey, yeah, knock on wood. Yeah, knock on wood is right. Now, here's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I would love to bring LaDonna back on. Perfect. Okay. Oh, there she is. LaDonna. And Leo. Hi. She Hi. How are you? Oh. Beautiful. Good. How are you doing? telling you we are in a room full of more talent than we can even stand right now leo rodriguez oh my god hey, leo. leo is hey, my leo. i would be lost without leo okay so this is the part of our show called go ahead keep eating because every week I, I i cannot just ask my creative friends to come on and talk about their creative sides i have to stay creative because okay. otherwise I'm just a hypocrite just walking around interviewing my talented friends. So I always cook. Every week I cook. So this week I went with a summer theme because today is the first day of summer. Right? So uh, what did I make today? So I went with a whole summer theme. Now you're going to be a little Turner, jealous. You're on the bed. You're going to drool. I know. You're going to be a little jealous. But I was at Acme today in Jersey and they were having a huge sale on lobster. Which <gasps> I know, LaDonna, I know. Because I know that you like seafood like I like seafood. So what did I make tonight? I made a steamed lobster. Oh, my um, God. I know. But it was on sale for six ninety nine a pound. What? It's, exactly. It's usually like $15 a pound. six ninety nine a pound. So I bought two of them. But anyway, I hope they didn't catch them in the Hudson River. Uh, you know what? Maybe that's why they're on sale, Mike. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm gonna eat it anyway, I don't care. I don't need to know where things come from. There are some things a girl does not need to know. Right. So here's my beautiful lobster. Now, these chips, I gotta tell you about these chips. They're special. If you go to Trader Joe's, they have this new chip called 
You like Trader Joe's and Donna? I am a Trader Joe's fanatic. I belong to several groups. Me too. Okay. <laughs> so their newest chip, which is my favorite, is called Everything But The Bagel. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it's all the, everything that would be on a, an Everything Bagel, plus the chips are super buttery. Don't even ask me how they, they do this, but it's my favorite chip. So everything but the, the, the chi uh, bagel chips there. Now, sticking with the summer theme, I made a salad of romaine lettuce, grape tomatoes, scallions, so chives, let's call them chives, um, and red peppers, and I'm gonna put, and red cabbage. Leo uh, Rodriguez introduced me to rice vinegar. Rice vinegar is everything. Love I have it. never tried it before, and Leo uses it quite a bit. <laughs> and so it, they, it's used in Japanese cuisine, um, mm -hmm. you know, extensively, and I love it. So I'm doing that with an avocado oil. That's going to be the right, girl. All right. Now, what did I go for a salad? Because I, as you heard, I was talking to Ike, and I can't fit into anything. So I'm trying to be better. So I went with a nice, and also it is gay pride. So I yeah. went Ike for you with a fruit salad. Look at <laughs> A bite, Maria. That's it. I mean, I'm like, Ike's going to be on the show. I'm going for the fruit salad. I love it. What a great presentation. That I have to go over. So that, I, love to cook. I love to cook. But now, I haven't had anyone back in the studio for, you know, since COVID for over a year. But really soon, what I'm thinking, because I used to have a lot of musician parties and I would cook up a storm. So I'm thinking this summer, I'm going to have a big musician's party and you're invited, okay? I will let you know. And and we just all come in and I cook a ton of food and then we just all sit around and sing for days on end. It's the Love best. It. Yeah, and I'll have you, you and Tim Moss, because Tim li literally is my neighbor. He's bought sauce for me, because you know, that's one of the things that happened in COVID. I started making, oh, oh, LaDonna, you had some of my sauce. The best sauce. <laughs> You actually ordered it for Valentine's Day. I sure did. I had a really good Valentine's Day time. <laughs> okay, good. Maria, I think I'm going to have to do what did you just put in my mouth on my next show and use your sauce. Ike, I will, I will definitely, I'll deliver it to you. I oh. have marinara, I have bolognese, I have meatballs, and spicy sausage is my new one. I know, I have to get the spicy sausage because the meatballs were... Oh my oh. God. And as Mario Davila always says, who doesn't like a spicy sausage? <laughs> it's true. Have we yeah. seen that commercial recently? Have you guys seen that commercial? I saw it. <laughs> I can't no. stop laughing. Mario's our manager at Brandy's. He's so funny. So finally one night I just recorded him doing a... Wow, look at the sauce here. I mean, it looks good. The ingredients look good. Everything looks good. The container looks good. Everything looks really nice, but I don't know. Is it any good? Is it any good? A fucking face is on it. <laughs> that is fabulous. What is that? Hysterical. Because he always says that. He goes, I love it. He's so funny. But anyway, so yes, Ike, you know what? I will, What? just let me know where to drop it off and I'll send you samples I of uh, all the different sauces. Them up. Tim and I will, will stop by, pick them up, and we'll, we'll try them on the show. Uh, really... I have met Tim in the park, literally, I two blocks too. down, and we have I've given him sauce. He's uh, adorable. Yeah, uh, amazing. So, oh my Red God. has resorted to dealing sauce in the park. You know uh, what's... I'm telling you, that's what a girl's got to do. What a girl's got to do, you got to have hustle in your throat. You live in New York City, you got to have hustle. I repurposed my you're sauce container. You did? Yeah, I use your sauce container for when I buy basil for my like my, my caprese salad, yeah. and because I can put, because you know the way to keep basil to stay a little longer is put a little water at the bottom and then just stick it, and it keeps longer that way. You're absolutely right. That's how. I love that you reuse that container, <laughs> but of course you did. Of course you did. That makes a, a total, total sense. But you know, I just feel like um, those of us that are creative, and where all of us here are, that even though we had to stop doing what we were doing, it's like you can't keep light in a jar. You just can't. Yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna seep out. Yeah. You know. And so mm -hmm. what? Let's uh, let's go with this. We have about ten minutes. 
what was something that came out of COVID that you didn't expect, like creatively speaking, that came out of COVID that you didn't expect? And it doesn't have to be like a big project or anything, just maybe something you found out about yourself that creatively that you didn't even know. Ike, you want I, to go first? Oh, go yeah, ahead. I, I, Ike, you go. Yeah. I, I, of course, I had all the gigs lined up and I thought, oh my God, I'm not sure when I'm performing. I thought, why not do a virtual show, which I did for 14 weeks and learning the technology and how to do Zoom. And I learned a lot and I wound up doing 14 weeks of a show called Live in Bed with Ike Abelli, having six, seven guests a week. I mean, how crazy is that, right? Mm -hmm. Like that, that's a lot of work, but it probably didn't even feel like work, did it? It, 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 sometimes with the technical issues it, it, yeah the technical it, stuff it, is when, always when you're on stage too and then you know, as a comedian as a singer Lavana, you probably know it's you could sing till your heart's content everybody's paying attention but when you're telling a joke and you have to mute everybody and you can't hear them laughing oh. it, it's like I'm bombing every night yeah you're absolutely right that's my least favorite part about virtual yeah. Is that you can't get that audience mm -hmm. thing that comes right back at you, you know? But um, yeah, that that's amazing. It, it's the things we learned while we were because, like I said, you cannot. There's no way to just. It's not like okay, well, we can't be creative. That's it. Put it away. You can't. No. You know, no. it's, it's gonna come out some way. So that's what you did. That's incredible. Yeah, but you know what too, and a lot of people that I did speak to, drag performers, comedian singers, about like mid way into this whole pandemic, a lot of them were saying like, oh my God, am I am I gonna be funny when I get back on stage? Am right. I gonna be able to interact? And you get nervous, you really do, because it's a whole year. Yeah, and you start to question yourself. It's like any other muscle. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> LaDonna, did you find singing, because as a singer, I gotta tell you, I it was I was shocked at how my voice just almost like just kind of contracted. Oh yeah, right. I said when it first started, I was like, oh, I'm going to warm up still every day. I didn't do that. Yeah, I had yeah. at least around the holidays. I don't think I sang a note for like two months. Yeah, because I had a lot of work by all that equipment, microphones, ring lights, backdrops. I learned how to use iMovie and GarageBand because uh, I did a lot of recordings at home, especially mm -hmm. with uh, Broadway Inspirational Voices. We did a lot of in-home recordings where we record our stuff and then we'd have to shoot videos at home. So mm -hmm. I had to learn quickly how to use GarageBand and it was it was a lot. And so I, at a point I was just like, I don't feel like doing any of this. Any of um, Because what I love about performing live you do it and you're done. I'm too much of a perfectionist for having to do self tapes because I'm like, oh, I did one note wrong. Let me, yeah. like, I shoot things at least 15 times <laughs> because I'm so critical of it. And so I'm glad to be back to live performances. Yeah, me yeah. too. And it feels great. But, but what, going back to what Ike was saying is that if you, even as a singer or comedian, whatever it is, I didn't realize how much I relied on that that circle of energy. Oh yes. And, and it, when it wasn't there, it was just this flat, like screen of nothing. All of a sudden, my brain took over and started chopping me down. Like, yes. you're not funny. You're not talented. No. Nobody wants to hear this. And then you have to look at yourself while you're doing it. So you're like, why do I do that when I? Why do I always make that fit? Oh my God. Right? Oh my God. So critical. 100%. It's, whereas if you're if just looking out to the audience and you're just like a vessel, I mean, as a singer and I'm and as a comedian too, like, you know, like I'm sure things just shoot into your head that you didn't even think were going to come in because right. of what's coming at you. Right? Yeah. Well, too, with me, I was, I was starting to write a lot of COVID jokes. Nothing nothing major you know about my weight gain and yeah. you know people talking on the phone now like what the hell is going on you know it used to be text now people are actually picking up the phone right and, and what am i supposed to say where am i running to i can't hang up <laughs> right, <can't> right. <laughs> it's true you know, so I, i'm just writing those jokes and then you know you're sitting there and you're thinking then the joan rivers mentality comes in and if they don't laugh you're like you know i thought that was funny when i wrote it <laughs> right right it's true though it's like that i mean for me like 
because my brain never shuts off anyway, like uh, mm -hmm. ever. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. But so that's what I started to do. And I had to really like do a lot of, in the beginning of COVID, I was really kind of losing my mind. Like I had to start, I had to write, like for me, I just wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. Like I would go to go a Google Docs and just write stream of consciousness, anything I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Because I was terrified of being trapped in my own head. Right. Yeah. You know? It's so it's creative. Yeah. Well LaDonna, for you you said it was like the garage band and all that stuff that you had to learn. That's what yeah. came out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty good at it now though. I, I have confidence to make like videos and audition videos now. Yeah. And uh, Leo, what were we gonna say, honey? I just I got it. I mean, all the stuff that we had to learn uh, over the year, it just was really right. Well, the thing is, I used to do the show in my apartment, and people would come over, and you know, we we'd go, we'd do it that way. And uh, then when we couldn't do it that, you know, then I had people calling in, ah. and I had them on the phone literally, and so I was holding it to the microphone, and then it was Leo's idea because it's a radio show that I just happened to Facebook Live. It goes through the yeah. radio. So I have like two computers going and all this. And Leo was like, well, why don't we try this new thing called StreamYard? You want and thank God for him. Yeah. But now it's so cool because I can, people can come in from all over the country or the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah, so that's cool. one of the cool things that came out of it. Well, that was the hard part with Zoom. I mean, ugh. Zoom was great, but then there was also the bombers that used to come in. And they used yes. To Remember? Yes, I do. And now yes. he's doing a show, and then somebody would come in, and then it would just trickle down, and it was you had to try to remove him, and then they had to do the passwords, which yeah, wound up helping. Yeah, that really uh, that felt so violating. Yeah, wasn't that awful? That was an awful, awful. That was in the beginning. You're right. Yeah. And listen, that went for everything because I mean, I go to even AA meetings on Zoom now. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I mean, I was doing it even in the beginning because we were like, uh. You know, I've been sober for 31 years, so I go to meet a lot of meetings. But I got to tell you, people were bombing constantly. And I'm like, this is really creepy. Wow. You know? Yeah, I teach through Zoom. That's how I haven't gone back to in-person teaching yet. And so we definitely had to password protect that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah especially with kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you like that, LaDonna? Did you like the, 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 the Zoom teaching? I don't because... The way I run my class, we like to like help them develop their audition piece. And so mm -hmm. like we'll rearrange the music on the spot, change keys on the spot. And you can't do that with Zoom. They have mm -hmm. to make have track tapes made before class and it's so it's not the same. Right. And then the, the lapse, the uh the, the time lapse with the delay yeah. music. Well, it's not bad because since that's why they use track tapes, so the tracks are on their side. Okay. But then sometimes we, everyone doesn't, you know, it really showed how everyone is equally economically. Yes. And so it was really sad to see some students like having to hide in their closets because they have other siblings in the house. And then I have some students in these palatial estates by the pool and balcony. I, yeah. had, I had 15 kids in the community center with their laptops, different ages, different grades, doing different yeah. things. And teachers trying to communicate with us in the after school program because they couldn't go to school. There's nobody yeah. there to watch them. So it was the personal connection is such an important part of teaching, you know? Yeah. You know, I, I, cause I was teaching when, um, because I also teach, and it, when it first happened, we were still teaching in that semester. So I think there was about four weeks left. And um, one of the things that I did like about the Zoom teaching was that I, because a lot of my kids were really little, is uh, I got to meet their parents as well on Zoom. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. So that was cute, and that they were so proud to like show you other things that I wouldn't have learned about. Like their pets, you know, there were times when they were oh. like their their cat would run across the screen or something, yeah. yeah, you know, or their dog, or their whatever. So I I started to use that a little more, you know, where everybody, and I taught a few classes on out school, like some writing classes, and mm -hmm. I used everything they had, you know. Um, so that actually was something good that came out of it. But I did I I don't know if you folks felt like this, but I did most of it just because I was in a panic. 
like my brain was in a panic and I just tried to use everything I had, you know, so I don't know if that, you know, hopefully, and that's what I want to close the show with. So let's, let's leave it with this because we could talk for hours. You guys, thank you so much. It was just amazing. What an amazing show. Like this could just go on and on and and you're you're both so interesting and talented and like electric and in such a calm way. If that makes and sense. You've been a friend in my head, Maria, for years, and I've been wanting this to happen, and I'm so uh, glad. Yeah, uh, I mean, thank you, Ike, and I'm so glad that you were able to do it. And uh, so let's just leave with the Everybody leave something. Uh, we'll start with LaDonna, and leave something for these, these people out there. Uh, just something of hope that you want to leave everybody with as a creative person. After... After such a tragic thing like this pandemic, great art always comes from it. So look forward to the renaissance. Artists are back. We're back performing again. And it's going to, you're not going to take it for granted anymore, I believe. So enjoy when you see a live performance. Okay, Mike, go ahead. I'm going to be simple. Uh, There's something that I had to think about for the whole year and it's usually just tell people be you be creative and be positive okay thank you so we i just got the signal from radio station that is our show i want to thank jim bell he's our producer and engineer i want to thank leo rodriguez he is our stage manager ike avelli Ladonna burns you are both a joy to be around thank you everybody we'll see you oh. at nine every week come back thank you Bye. 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 Who I am, who I am, who I am.